Hello, I'm Bruce Yaney, and in the next two episodes of Homemade Science, we're going to compare a vacuum cannon to a compressed air cannon. Our projectile is going to be these ping pong balls, and both of these cannons can get this moving pretty fast. In this episode, we'll look at these individually, and then in part two, we're going to join these together and see if we can get this ball going supersonic. Here's show number one. I demonstrated both of these pieces when I had a recent visit from Steve Spangler. He brought his camera crew to shoot two episodes of his science program called DIY Sci. One. Wow, look at this! <laughs> We'll start with the vacuum cannon. Now the piece is fairly simple. It starts with an eight foot piece of PVC pipe. Got a simple support at this end. Eight foot stretch. Second support at this end. It's got a shutoff valve connected to a vacuum pump. Before we can create a vacuum inside this tube, we need to seal either end. My material choice is the mylar that's found in these balloons. This is the front end of the tube that's been sanded smooth so that it doesn't have any sharp edges to break the mylar. We want a good seal here so that it holds the vacuum. We'll use this ping pong ball as a projectile. Put that in the tube. Mylar is going to go over the end. On top of that, it's going to be this rubber collar, and that's going to hold it in place. We want a nice tight fit here. Now, of course, we need a target, and one of my favorites has been empty soda cans. However, we can't just sit it here because the ping pong ball would simply knock it over. To make it more stable, I'm going to screw it down to this board. That feels good. Now let's put it in front of the cannon barrel and we should be ready to go. I'll turn on the vacuum pump here. To fire it, all I have to do is break that rear seal and off it goes. Try it again. Well, as you can see, the cans didn't hold up too well to the ping pong balls. In most cases, it either went right through it or ripped the can in half. One of my favorite shots is this one, where the ball is actually embedded in the can, didn't get all the way through it. The operation of the cannon is fairly simple, but let's take a closer look. The ping pong ball is placed inside the barrel. Both ends of the barrel are sealed. A tube runs over to the vacuum pump which is able to evacuate most of the air out of the barrel, but not all of it. And the pump has a gauge on it that indicates the reduction pressure inside the tube. Meanwhile, the atmosphere is applying 14.7 pounds per square inch on the outside to try and get into that empty space. So when I puncture that back seal, the atmosphere is gonna rush in, and since there's very little air in there, this ball is gonna accelerate very, very quickly. The ball only has a mass of a few grams, so by the time it reaches the end of that barrel, they can reach speeds up to about 600 miles an hour. Even with so little mass, at that speed it can pack quite a punch. We did find that some objects could absorb the energy much better than others. Now that we've seen what the vacuum cannon can do, let's take a look at the compressed air cannon. The barrel on this piece is about 32 inches long. This ping pong ball is going to sit about right here inside that barrel. Here I have a shutoff valve and I need to close this so that I can fill this tank with air. 
there's a pressure gauge here that's going to tell me how much pressure I have inside. And to pump this up, I can either use this foot pump, which is what I used when Steve Spangler was visiting. All right, it's pressurized. Okay, you ready? Take that off. We'll take that off. Good. I think I prefer using my air compressor. It's a little bit easier, and I can fill it much quicker up to about 90 to 110 PSI. Oh, I had a ping pong ball. There's my target. All I have to do is open that valve and let's see what happens. Now let's tie an air cannon against the soda can. Looks like the compressed air cannon has no problems destroying the soda cans either. Now that was really impressive how easy it ripped this can completely apart. But how much of it was due to the momentum of the ball versus the air blast that came out of the barrel? So let's set it up again and this time we'll just see what the air blast does without the ping pong ball. The rapid reduction in pressure produces a fog that allows us to see the air movement a little bit better. So it looks like the air blast is able to do some damage. While it's not able to do as much damage as the ping pong ball, it looks like it's ripping the can apart after the ball has hit it. Let's try a shot against the sharp edge. As expected, it cut it in two, but it's too fast to catch clearly with my camera. Now to figure out how fast these balls are moving, I've painted this one black, and I'm going to fire it across the top of this speed strip here, while this camera is recording its motion at 960 frames per second. If we do a little bit of math, we should be able to calculate its speed. Let's see that 10 times slower. It's still way too fast. Even at 960 frames per second, the ball is still a blur, but we can roughly make out that it's traveling about 18 centimeters in that time period, and that'll work out to about 386 miles per hour. With an exit velocity of almost 400 miles an hour, that's pretty fast, but this is still about 200 miles an hour slower than the vacuum cannon. Now why is that? Well, to start, in this case, the ball has to be pushed through the air to accelerate. And with this volume of air, even though it's at a greater pressure, when I open that valve, that pressure reduces dramatically the further the ball travels down the barrel. The vacuum cannon, on the other hand, accelerates without air resistance with less pressure, but that pressure is consistent for a barrel that's three times longer. Now, for both cannons, the length of the barrel does determine the exit velocity. The barrel is not very long, we have a short acceleration, velocity is not very high. But as we make that barrel longer, then we have more time to accelerate, it's going to give us a higher velocity, and up to a point, if we continue making it longer, that's going to give us more time to accelerate, so that should give us a higher exit velocity. Now let's go ahead and test this idea. Now the higher the velocity, the more energy it has, and the more energy it means the more destructive it can be. So let's test each barrel against a series of soda cans and see what happens. This barrel is only about eight inches long. As you would expect, not much damage. Next up is a 30 inch barrel. Well, that's better. Next up is a barrel that's five and a half feet long. I 
As you would expect, there's more damage. It's interesting that the can starts to buckle even before the ball hits it. Hey, here's a barrel that is nine feet long. This child damaged all four cans. And finally, let's try a barrel that's 11 and a half feet long. What do you think will happen? Originally, I'd expected this barrel to give me more damage than the previous ones. But in trying it a few times, I found it was only equal to, or possibly slightly less than the previous barrels. That observation was backed up when I did the calculations for the exit velocities, and found this barrel is actually less than the previous two barrels. Now as fast as these cannons can shoot, with this ball having so little mass, air resistance is going to slow it down fairly quickly. But just for the fun of it, let's see how far it'll go. Ready? One, two, three. That well, looks like that was only about a hundred feet. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly went through a lot of soda cans and ping pong balls making it. I hope you'll go on to part two where we're going to add the compressed air cannon onto the back end of the vacuum cannon trying to get that ball supersonic.